2016, the year for forgiveness. I ain't miss it. Really, the disloyalty had me all shitty. I'm on a new level. Same day was up 60. Made it out the hood, thought I was representing. But when I came back, I was met with resentment. You ain't really with us. You just up and left. Had me self-conscious, feeling bad about myself. Slipping back into old habits just to hang. Felt conflicted, so I went to the OGs for game. My barber said, you ain't like that nigga here, hey. Push forward. They on some backward shit. See him later. Had hood dreams. Take them all to the top. Wanted to stack it like Legos, but they infatuated with the block. Wanted to be legit with millions living in the hood. Envious niggas in my hood ain't want me doing good, but it's cool. Jesus loved Judas through his thoughts. You need help with that rent or that bail, Brody? No problem at all. Call my phone, homie. Well, hello. I'm Justin Gordon. Some say Detroit Gordon. Some say nigga. Whichever you like to call, I'll take it. Welcome to Out of an Abundance of Caution. We turned 30 today. Woohoo! <laughs> Woo! Yes. What's Out of Caution? Is this your first time checking in? <laughs> it's an avant garde micro festival, live online, dirty, quick, fascinating work responding to and from places and people with whom we selected to shelter on a wildly inclusive, non-hierarchical platform. Shouts out to the people that's working in the background, and shouts out to you. Shouts out to Brick Theater. Are you ready for our first act? Because we got a few for you. Variety, of course. The first one, Melissa McClung. Who was that? You'd like to know. Melissa McClung is an award-winning filmmaker best in Western Massachusetts. Melissa's films often explore themes of environmentalism, tinged with whimsy, humor, sci-fi, and no nostalgia. She is committed to regional filmmaking and shoots on location in Western Massachusetts with local actors, non-actors, and crew members. Working in documentary, fiction, and hybrid storytelling, Melissa blends reality, fantasy, animation, and found footage to create new collage worlds, often with strong women and girls at the center. Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick the night off absolutely right with the video. Dreams don't seem to make much sense, do they? Let's say these G's are the germs, breeding in your mouth and throat. Viruses can be scattered with each particle of saliva and mucus. When one sneezes or coughs, for instance. Zoom. 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 Zoom.
reality seems too difficult for us to face, we retreat behind defensive mechanisms. Beaches are closed for the foreseeable future. Our virtual tour of the sea lets you experience the wonders of the ocean through a curated selection of pre-recorded footage. A beach trip in a pinch. Sit back, relax, and let us transport you. We're starting on a sailboat on a windy day. High, diddle, diddle, high in a little cabin we'll coo in a sailboat in the sky. I diddle diddle high in a little plane built for two We'll go sailing, you and I If you'll be the girl and I'll be the fella My head'll whirl like a whirling propeller I diddle diddle my every little dream Will come true in a sailboat in the sky But what's it like under the waves? Marine tour guide Robert Wagman has the answer. The ocean floor is a dream world, silent, vast, mystic, unreal, lonely beyond words, beauty that haunts one, majesty all its own, inhabited by strange, weird creatures. In this submerged world, unreal lights play across the ocean floor. Strange fish peer out of unexpected corners, forests of gently undulating seaweed. Whoopee! And that is that. Thank you, Robert. Now, we're almost out of time. Here's a marine montage for good measure. Oh yes. We hope you enjoyed Tour of the Sea. We'll see you again when society reopens, and in the meantime, look out for Volume 2, Tour of the Library, coming soon. of tomorrow. Climb aboard. Yes, yes, yes. Melissa McClung, Melissa McClung, everybody, one more time. You can also uh, uh, follow her Instagram. Uh, it was displayed below. Uh, if you didn't get it, it's Melissa's Marbles. Yes, yes, yes. And 
We also are leaving tips. If you want to tip these artists, these artists can use the tour of our green and blue capital to go ahead and continue to make art and do the research needed to get it done. All right. Before we move on, you know, uh, we have to once again celebrate our 30th birthday. And, you know, we like to celebrate 30 birthdays with good events, like the basketball game. I know a lot of people are watching the basketball game also as well. So shout out to all you Heat fans out there. Yes, yes. And uh, I put my shirt on backwards. So I, if you are 30, people who are 30 know about the era when we used to wear jerseys backwards. So, you know, you 30-year-olds, shout out. Happy birthday to all y'all. Happy birthday to Out of Caution. Now, real quick. Also, you see, shout out to the King Matorium. You know, shout out to... The creator himself, King. We back in the building. Beautiful to be here. And speaking of beautiful content, beautiful art, and beautiful things to say, we got coming up next, Fever Minogue. Yes, yes. Right here, real talk. We about to have real talk about housing, about essential life necessities for black people for everybody and you know whenever you're talking about real black liberation that's always an uncomfortable topic because we profit off of black enslavement still and so it's just like it's actively just not okay generally in this country so we always like to praise people who stand up and do what's right even in the face of massive danger so Without further ado, please sit back and engage your brain. Fever Minogue, everybody. New York City, 
one of the strongest cities in this country, stand by and let this happen? How do we allow that? As we are living in the middle of a pandemic, an economic crisis, an educational crisis, we still have a housing crisis. How much longer are we going to do this? How much longer is the younger generation going to come out, scream at the top of their lungs, fighting, being arrested, so that our city, our country, our president hears us out to do something? I'm a middle class citizen and I feel embarrassed that this is how hard I have to fight for my city. This is how hard I have to fight for the younger generation. This is how hard I have to fight for my siblings, night and day. Why must we occupy hotels? Why must we occupy City Hall? Why must we occupy spaces so that someone hears us? Does it not hurt your spirit that younger generation, people who are 18 and younger, are fighting for their lives, fighting for you to keep your jobs, to keep your homes, to keep your education, and not die in the middle of a pandemic? Is that not crazy to you? Do you not wake up every single day and ask, why do we still do this? No one wants to continuously fight for a policy system that has crippled black and brown people for their entire lives. Does this not drive any of you insane? How do you continue to put on that badge? How do you continue to work in these places that are so privileged that you can simply help out all these individuals by simple acts? It takes nothing for you to put one of these people in the bed. I'm tired of screaming from the bottom of my heart for someone else to hear us. If the NYPD continues to do that, if this city continues to do that, then understand this is only going to get worse and we're going to continue to do it. This is unfair. This is unjust. More care, not cops. Um, uh, hi all. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm, uh, Fever. I'm, uh, uh, an organizer with Abolition Park. Um, and I guess, uh, so I want to say thank you so much to Out of Abundance of Caution and to, uh, to Justin for, for having us. Um, and thank you all for watching the video and, um, for giving this your attention. I guess maybe I'll just offer some, uh, context. Um, I don't know what, like, Kind of how much you guys sort of know about our organization, but basically, Abolition Park is the community that was evicted from the city hall, the New York City Hall protest camp, in um, uh, in July after having uh, occupied that space for thirty days in protest uh, for um, police and prison abolition and for for Black liberation. Um, uh, one element, one kind of really important element of that community is that because we were occupying space outside during the summer, um, we quickly became a community of uh, activists with and without housing. Um, and one thing that Bill de Blasio, Mayor Bill de Blasio said when he justified, when he authorized the NYPD in evicting us from the park, 
uh, was that it, the, the, the space had become, quote, less and less about protests, more and more about homeless people sleeping in a camp together. Um, as if in a city with three empty living spaces for every person who needs housing, people, uh, the, the, the fact of people sleeping outside in the street kind of together for seeking temporary safety for, for, uh, from police harassment, um, that is already a protest, right? Um, so housing became a very important issue for our community. Um, and we think that it's like pretty tied to the project of police and prison abolition, uh, insofar as, um, you know, like abolition is not just about taking, um, uh, 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 sorry, I've seen the comment that justification is hollow as hell. Yes, that's correct. Um, it's, it, it, it was bullshit. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, but, you know, abolition is not just about taking um, murderous, genocidal institutions out of the world. It's also putting structures in place that support everybody's ability to live and live well. That includes universal housing. So the action that you just saw uh, that the Sheraton that occupied the lobby of where activists from Abolition Park occupied the lobby of the Sheraton Times Square, um, demanding universal housing, demanding housing for our people who were evicted by Bill de Blasio and the NYPD. Um, uh, uh, that action took place as part of a week of action for housing justice, where we partnered with a bunch of different organizations in the city focused on canceling rent, on uh, uh, ending evictions uh, entirely for everyone, and also on housing the homeless, um, on, on housing everyone who needs housing. Um, I guess that's that's maybe um, sort of helpful context. I would be happy to answer any questions that you guys have if you want to drop them in the comments. Um, yes, the uh, uh, the wealthy white residents on the Upper West Side raised a million dollars to fight so to have fight housing uh, 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 people at the Lucerne Hotel. Um, so uh, if people don't know. Um, one thing that has been happening is that some of the hotel spaces, hotels in New York are 63% vacant because of Corona. Some of those spaces have been dedicated to housing unhoused people, but the wealthy white people on the Upper West Side uh, don't want unhoused people living in their neighborhoods, even though they already do, right? Um, and not only did they raise a million dollars to 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 fight the city, to sue the city, they also hired um, a lawyer whose clients include Amazon and Palantir um, and, and, and Chevron, um, who is going to um, uh, uh, sue the city over housing people in this neighborhood. Um, uh, uh, and the city caped, you know, it moved, it shuttled, sh sorry, shuttered people uh, uh, out of that space where they were temporarily housed. Um, and which is one of the reasons why the kind of hotel program that the city's been putting in place currently is not good enough, um, because at a moment's notice, if sort of, uh, uh, again, like structural white supremacy objects to the presence of unhoused people in, in a neighborhood, the city will just cave and move them away. So we need, uh, we need housing. Uh, we need homes, not shelters. Um, and, and the other thing that I think that is important for you guys to know is that, um, uh, a, a bunch of hotels in New York are about to be closed permanently. Uh, the Hilton Times Square, the Courtyard Marriott, uh, Courtyard Marriott on 35th Street, the Courtyard Marriott on 5th Avenue, all of these uh, are, are about to, are, are closed for good. Uh, surely more hotels will follow. That is how, that like could be housing. That could be, that so easily could be housing for everyone. And that's one of the things that we wanted to say with this action. Um, but yeah, happy to like answer any questions if y'all want to drop them in the comments. Um, okay. Uh, how does abolition parks work uh, uh, intersect and how does it not intersect with the election? What changes as a result of the election? What doesn't and how can you guys help? Okay, so I'll answer the last one first. You can help. So our, our pre after we were evicted, um, our primary focus uh, in terms of our mutual aid projects, became housing the people who had just lost uh, uh, their home um, at the City Hall protest camp. That means that we are paying, you know, in kind of different situations, some hotel rooms, some, some, some apartments. We are covering the housing costs for the unhoused members of our community. Um, uh, that's a really massive expense. 
Um, and it is our largest monthly expense. Um, so you can help us out by contributing to our GoFundMe and I will, I will drop a link and I, I, I will get a link that you can sort of see in the comments, but you can also Venmo at Abolition Park and Cash App Abolition Park. Um, and all of that will go towards keeping our people in safe, secure housing. Um, that's one way to help. Um, how does our work, how does and doesn't our work inter intersect with the election? I guess one thing that you could say uh, is that the houselessness crisis pre-existed um, the uh, uh, pre-existed the current administration and will outlast it. It was installed under a series of both Democratic, sorry, both Republican and lately Democratic governments in New York State and New York City. Um, and has to do with putting profit over people. That will not change whatever the result there, whatever the result of the election in uh, November, um, people, uh, you know, a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand people in New York uh, are still going to be sleeping in shelters on the streets, you know, uh, a million people uh, nationwide are still going to um, be houseless. That number will only increase as coronavirus evictions uh, hit uh, starting in January 2021, uh, in fact, in New York State, uh, eviction cases are, are are free to proceed, right? Um, so people, and it's important, I think, also, to, you know, you look at the stats, right? S nearly 60% of New York's unhoused people are Black. Um, uh, about 30% are Latinx. So houselessness is genocide by other means. You know, houselessness is a way that capital consigns Black and brown people to death. Um uh, 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 and, and so I guess like, uh, long story short, this is not going to change depending on the results of the election. Uh, it will change via a massive social transition to putting people over profit, right? Um, uh, sorry, I'm seeing another question. Uh, in my experience, what is the most effective way to end homelessness in New York City? Can people permanently live in hotels? Well, uh, they could if the city was willing to turn shuttered hotels into housing. Um, what is the most effective way to end homelessness in New York City? Uh, once it, so there are about, you know, it depends on the estimates, but there are, let's, let's say there are like, you know, between 80 and 100,000 uh, unhoused people in New York right now. Um, many of them are not in the shelter system. The shelter system is violent. It is overcrowded. It is a, it, it produces coronavirus hotspots. They work with police. They work with, um, uh, the foster care system that, um, uh, 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 uh like, raw that you know dispossesses um children uh and their from their families um uh, uh so you know like th that that is even though you can theoretically get into a shelter in new york it's very violent um uh and many people avoid it for very good reason um that said there are three empty living spaces for every unhoused person in new york city currently and that is not including the hotel rooms which are 63 percent vacant so you'll see you'll see you're, you'll hear liberal new yorkers um policy wonks people like that go like oh how do we end homelessness well we need to build more housing bullshit um we need to redistribute a resource that already exists luxury apartments throughout the city Hundreds of thousands of luxury apartments throughout the city are vacant, right? Um, the city could use eminent domain to, uh, 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 like, theoretically, right? I mean, uh, 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 to uh, redistribute housing that is already in place, right? We don't need more housing to be built. We especially don't need more housing to be built in, like, condo developments in Crown Heights, you know, with certain, like, so-called affordable housing um, rates, you know, say, say like, you know, most of it's luxury housing and some of it's affordable housing. And then you move some people into, into those rooms and they enter by like a different door from like the market rate paying customers or however, like the fuck this, this stuff works, which I mean, all that is real, right? Um, uh, we don't need that. We don't need these, uh, kind of housing developments that are, are, are bargains with the real estate industry, with real estate money, with banks, um, that further gentrify communities, but further gentrify black and brown communities, further push people out of housing. We don't need any of that. We just need to redistribute the housing that is already in place. We need to cancel rent to prevent more people from losing their homes. We need a real eviction moratorium in, uh, you know, like 
a period. Um, but you know, let's just focusing on, on 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 our own city, like in New York City, in New York State, a real eviction moratorium because all evictions are violent, all evictions are genocidal. Um, uh, so so the tools to um, end homelessness are to embrace policies of universal housing, right? And we know what those are. And again, those resources already exist. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, that's, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, yeah, the solutions are already here. Uh, we don't have to dream them up there and reach. That is absolutely true. Um, any other, any other questions? Uh, okay, well, um, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, it's re really great to be here. Once again, uh, Venmo or Cash App, Abolition Park, um, anything you give, really uh, everything you give us will will go towards housing our community members. Um, and thanks so much to to Out of Caution for for having me here. And thanks to you guys for watching the video. Uh, the other way you can help is um, uh, you can share that video. Uh, send it to all of your friends. Um, that would be great. Um, uh, yeah, okay, have a great night. Fever Mano! Fever Mano, everybody. One more time, one more time. Go ahead and give it up for Fever Mano. Fever Mano, shout out. Yes. Very, very important information. Now, as we continue on, we continue on with the night once again, you know. Shout out to everybody, you know, watching the basketball game. We got game six of the NBA Finals. I'm Justin Gordon, host of the 30th anniversary of Out of Caution. And... You know we had to give it a one time for the goat, you know, for the Mamba himself, you know, and we can go ahead and give a moment of silence for everybody, you know, uh, that has uh, passed away in 2020. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. All right, as we gonna keep going in the night, we gonna keep on going, keep on going. Also, uh, uh, want to acknowledge one more time. It is our 30th anniversary, and tips are cool for the artists. If you want to tip Fever Minogue, if you want to go ahead and continue their work and 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 help them build uh, a, a, a formidable plans and formidable opposition, you know, actual formidable solutions. Uh, you know, green and blue capital is is always nice. You know, uh, uh, and 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 at the end of the day, that those are the tools that we we choose we chose to hold on the pedestal in society right now so uh we can tip and moving forward you know on our 30th anniversary you want to ask yourself what's something that you can do 30 times that's better than doing it just once you know you can go ahead and drop those in the comments because you know 30 comes with experience you know it's cool to have that first experience but that 30th you've been around the block you know so go ahead drop it in the comments what's something 30 times is better than one time you know sometimes one time is better than 30 times if you know what i'm talking about you know <laughs> all right this next artist admiral gray admiral gray in the building admiral gray is a multidisciplinary artist whose work finds the divine and fantastical in the raw and actual Alternately exercising her skills as a creator or performer, depending on the project, her work often integrates her writing, music composition, and design into live performances or video art. A singer, musician, actor, and dancer, she also hand makes opulent costumes, puppets, props, installations, and videos that she builds out of repurposed and cheap debris of modern life or utilizes glitch lo-fi visuals and happenstance to texturize her work please give it up for admiral gray bad dreams work in progress part one i dream a lot about epic disasters it sounds cliche, but it started after 9-11. One dream like this starts with me in midtown Manhattan. We notice a large warplane flying above us. By the time we all notice it, it starts firebombing us. The bombs fall and fall. I remember how the bombs looked falling through the skyscrapers as vividly as if it happened to me in my waking life. 
the bombs fall and fall and we run and run trying to get somewhere safe, but nowhere is safe. There's lots of horror and lots of trying to help anyone and myself survive. But the planes and the bombs keep coming and coming. Every time I have these dreams, I mentally hit a point of no return. My hope dissipates into the realization that I'm not likely to survive, that most of us won't. I realize that I have no idea where my family is, where my friends are, where my lover is. I realize that they easily could all be dead. I realize that it's incredibly likely that I will never see any of them ever again, if I survive. Then I have the final thought of my disaster dreams, which is, it's all over. Meaning, life as I knew it, as we knew it. The despair I feel in this moment of the dream is profound. But the despair is accompanied by a deep feeling of release, total emptiness, a kind of freedom. It's all over. And that's okay that it's all over, because that's what's happening. This time, this moment, this existence, is over. It's our turn to die. Time for the next thing. It's a big universe out there. Then I wake up. <laughs> yeah, any credit. I say, well, he's got so much money that eight thousand doesn't matter. Eight thousand is eight thousand. What an incredible gesture by Russell Westbrook. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Amal Gray, Amal Gray. Shout out everybody. Uh, bad dreams, work in progress. That's just part one. So go ahead and give it up to him, man. Go ahead and give it up to him for sharing that art with us today. As you can see, I'm wearing some Detroit official. Shout out to Pinky. Shout out to House of Christopher Sean. Moving on. Speaking of 30, you know, uh, shout out to the birthday. Uh, all right. Now we moving forward. Just want to go ahead and check in the chat, man. Just let everybody know. I love everybody in the comments. Appreciate you all in the comments. Love the comments. Comments. We love comments. So. Speaking of comments, we have some art, some commentary that is off the chain. And they go by Corey and Smins, Love Conquers the Earth. A few years from now, when cities have banned gas-fueled cars and drag queens, host gardening clubs, two enamored teens on opposite sides of the country struggle to meet in the middle, Corey wants a relationship. Smin wants a revolution. Each is difficult to attain when there are college essays and manifestos to write, mom shopping to do, and maybe a planet to save. A themic and body, Corey and Smith's Love Conquers the Earth is a queer, echo medi giving Zoomers, Boomers, and everyone in between a future to fear or believe in. Tonight, Jamie Lowenstein, Smith, and Jordan Ho, Corey, will perform their first scene from the play. A workshop production presented by Loading Dock Theater's Forklift Reading Series will we, be performed October 15th to 17th. It's just next week, beginning of this week, at the Bosco Borough Center for the Performing Arts in a socially distanced performance, also featuring Daphne Overbeck. The music is directed by Nikolai Meisler. Corey and Smins, Love Conquers the Earth. Take it away. Done. No way. Yeah. I don't believe it. <laughs> believe it, baby. STFU. That's 10. I win. How the F did you get from Little Shop of Horrors to John Weir in three clicks? <laughs> Little Shop to Sierra Nevada Club to American Dream to John Muir. What is this, amateur hour? 
I clicked on sadism and went down the dark rabbit hole of personality disorders. <laughs> Yikes! Do you know what aneurysis is? No. It's bedwetting after age five, but the kind that leads to murdering animals. <laughs> Why are they going to make it sound so fancy? I got a new shirt today. What color? Turquoise. That's my fave. I know. <laughs> oh, oh, oceanic. Well, yeah. maybe it's more of like an aquamarine. Send a pic. I will. Is it a Wednesday shirt? What? Like a shirt you'd wear on a Wednesday? IDK. As opposed to a Friday out to dinner or a Saturday at the movies. It's more of a Sunday for church. Ew. It's not like frumpy. Will you take your shirt off? So you still is on church. Um, I thought that was canceled like decades ago. Uh, Jesus was the OG socialist, free healthcare and wine. <laughs> we don't do church. I know, be Cali of you. <laughs> wow. Well, I do like the songs though. Uh, Oh, come all you faithful, hark the herald angels, they're tuneful, blasted nights. Well, our church gets this really big band to play the greatest hits on Xmas Eve. That sounds nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. So. <laughs> Uh, when I was in first grade, Ms. Ruth made us read this story, and afterwards we had to sit at our tables and say what our favorite part was. And I wrote that I liked the story because the character was nice, and she knew I was the smartest in the class. I had more gold uh, recycling stickers, which were our gold stars, than anybody else. And she was like, "Really, persimmon." Nice. And what I wanted to say was that I liked the story. I didn't have much to say about the story because it had zero arc and less character development, but I didn't. So I rewrote the sentence to say, I liked the story because the character was kind. And she was all, oh, Persimmon, yes, kind. Have another recycling sticker, which was so friggin' stupid. But those stickers were probably weren't even recyclable. <laughs> you could come visit me and come to church with me on Christmas Eve. You would get to hear the fun music and have sail wafers and wine. <laughs> Yeah, dinner and theater. Yeah, like a date. Maybe it'll even snow. Hello, effing hell. Have you ever seen snow? It snow's dead as elephants. R.I.P. Rip. Yeah. So you've never seen snow? I guess not. OMG, OMG, you have to come then. They say there's a 5% chance of a white Xmas, which is the highest it's been in years. I mean, no pressure. Like, only if you're like dying to come. <laughs> uh, no, that sounds Or really not. Like, we could just lock really ourselves in this chat room forever. <laughs> steamy. But, but if, if you want to, like, flights on United are cheap. I checked. <laughs> Oh, wow. Spirited is cheaper, but I heard it's wilder than King's Akka. What's that? Um, 
Excuse me. It's the tallest effing roller coaster in the world. It goes from zero to 128 MPH in less than four seconds. How have you never heard of this in all your Wikipedia? You have to come and see it. It's in New Jersey. Uh, like DTS? What? Down the shore? No, we have other amusement parks. For a cute Corey, I do church. Oh, MG, really? <laughs> yeah, that sounds really. Oh, don't say nice. Hot. Oh. Uh, in G2G, uh, a drag queen gardening hour. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh chat tomorrow? I still have to write my college app essay and I still don't know what I'm going to write it about and I uh, have a big colonizer test on Tuesday. I hate a push. <laughs> <laughs> For every answer I write in E, it happened because the whites wanted money and land. But I could call uh, nine is he? No, my time. That's midnight for me. I know. And I have to get up early for acapellas on Tuesday. I know. Okay. Well, all I want to say is that you're in the position of power in this relationship because you will always have that extra three hours. So you're in power. And being in power is no longer sexy. I know. So, when do I get to see you? Soon. Carbon breather. Less than three. <laughs> o2 breather. Less than three. Who conquers the earth? Love conquers the earth. Give it up one more time for Corey and Smee and Corey and Smee and everybody. Yes, yes. Can't wait for the distance version of that to come out. So watch out on that one more time. Corey and Smee, Corey and Smee, you can't tip. Everybody, you can't tip and help those artists out. Yes. Now, before we move forward, you know, I want to go ahead and Acknowledge that I love my city just like you probably love yours. I'm from Detroit. I love that. And but we always what we like to do on this show is acknowledge uh, 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 individuals and groups that came before us and that have borrowed this land from our children and took care of this land. You know, like me personally, I like to represent the Ojibwe and Ashinabe tribe and, and the Upper and Lower Peninsulas of Michigan. And so feel free to acknowledge different indigenous lands that your city or your workplace may occupy, you know? And so we can go ahead and get more connected to the world around us, the world before us, so we can go ahead and go forward, you feel me? Yes. Speaking of going forward into one of our, really, our main event of the night. I'm very excited. We got Joey Kip, y'all. Kip, 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 y'all. We got Joey Kip, y'all. Kip, 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 Kip y'all. Uh. Joey Kip was born in Brazil and raised in Mountain View. 
California. Ha. He was featured as one of Time Out's New York's favorite hot dancers of 2012 and has been mentioned for his outstanding performances in the NY Times on numerous occasions. He was last seen in Damn Yankees at Merry-Go-Round Playhouse, directed by David Lowenstein and choreographed by Tony Award winner nominee Scott Wise. Everybody becoming Joey Kip. Let's go.
Joey Kip, Joey Kip, Joey Kip. Yes, yes. Oh, how we love rehearsal spaces. Thank you, Joey Kip, for bringing us on that ride. Thank you for your art. Thank everybody for their art. And as much as we love, love being here, we are coming to an end in a moment. But first, we you know we have a group message. Um, just before we just thank everybody, we want to just also make a digital land acknowledgement. And Adrian Wong's digital land acknowledgement goes as, since our activities are digitally shared to the internet, let's take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technology structures and ways of thinking we use every day. We're using equipment and high-speed internet, not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technology that are central to much of the art we make leaves significant carbon footprints, contributing to changing the climates that disproportionately affect indigenous people worldwide. I invite you to join us in acknowledging all this, as well as our shared responsibility to make good of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship. And I like to add friendship or just being, you know, a, a, a citizen of the world. Those are my words at the end. But we wanted to acknowledge that and go ahead and put that because we just want to put a cap on a great night and, and, and just go ahead and just, just be wholesome. You know, like and, and just host them in the way we love each other. I just feel like a lot of love and a lot of good energy is coming even from the computer. And this is a, just a, a device, and but, but we make that happen uh, across the country, across the world. Uh, once again, let's just shout out all of our artists one more time. Give it up for Joey Kip. Uh, give it up for Corey and Smith's Love Conquers the Earth. Give it up for Admiral Gray, Rockstar, Fever Mano, my peoples. Give it up for them. And Melissa McClung, the filmmaker, give it up for them. That's my Kobe face. You know, I am your man, Justin Gordon. Uh, I do have a book, Six Mile Negus on the Honor Roll in Michigan. You can pick that up from me. You can just DM me at Detroit Gordon, or you can email me, Justin, A-G at U-M-I-C-H dot E-D-U. You can call me. Yeah, I'm going to go crazy. It's 2020. You can't do this. <laughs> But you can DM me, you know, Instagram, you know, Facebook, hit me up, you know, get a book. Or if you got to, you can go through Amazon. But that's okay. I'm going to get a website soon. Um, once again, Brick Theater, more information. Go to Brick Theater, out of Kashi. We 30, baby. We in the 30, 30, baby. Let's get with it. Fourth quarter of 2020. I love y'all. With love from Detroit. Shout out, Brooklyn. Ah, let's get it. All right, we are done. Thank you so much. That was so awesome. I'm back. We're not live anymore. Wait, no, yes, we are. <laughs> Oops. Hi, everyone. Love you. Good night.